I'll do it on my computer. How's that? So it just say it's, it's it's recording. So I probably should have had it on before everyone comes because now they have a message that pops up that you acknowledge if you're um, being recorded. So um, for all, everyone that's just getting in, in the chat box, if you put in your uh, name, your club, your role within the district, um, uh, that'll be good. Use whatever feature that shows in your corner, either it's going to be the uh, reactions. If you can find it, a thumbs up is good too. Um, if you, if you want to, um, to talk, uh, what, how we're going to begin this is, this is how I envisioned it. If it doesn't work, um, it doesn't work, but we're trying some different, <laughs> we're going to try some different ways to communicate. Um, and, and, and each of you in, uh, is in a crucial role during this time, um, not only because of the, of the crisis we're in, but just because uh, it, the job in and of itself um, is demanding as a president, a district chair, um, and uh, y'all want to succeed. You all want to have a good year. And um, regardless of what the, the environment is, right? So hopefully... Um, this is going to be that tool. This is going to be the tool that brings us all back together after our long break of two and a half weeks. <laughs> but uh, let's get us going moving forward, right? And that's the intent of this. Uh, during my club visits with the boards and the um, many of them were uh, asking way, different ways that uh, what are other clubs doing and what, what can I do to um, engage members? And hopefully... <laughs> That's what we're gonna to begin to do tonight. It's a three-part series, as you know. So uh, I felt that uh, the first meeting, we are gonna do uh, the 20, 20 minute or so, uh, sharing questions, whatever you may have. Um, and I have a little, I'm gonna share uh, a PowerPoint. Um, I hope it doesn't take away too much from, um, but so, if y'all can, I wanted to start with, this is the uh, President's Roundtable series. And again, hearing from the presidents, taking what we, uh, what you're asking for and uh, maybe coming back the next month or responding immediately with some of your questions or needs or ideas. Um, but also we're prepared. Uh, we have leaders that are prepared to, um, give you some ideas, takeaways that you can do um, immediately. So this is where we're at, right? We're leaving 2020, we're climbing that stair to 2021, we're here. So we're thinking, well, we need some new ideas. And what are my challenges? How am I gonna face them? That, that's what's bringing us here. And hopefully we can discuss that now. So the best way to predict uh, the future really is to create, everyone wants to know what's gonna happen. What's the plan? What's the, we're so used to planning and scheduling and having everything uh, in its place. And definitely that's not the year, this is not the year for that. So what we create it, we're gonna create our own uh, future. And uh, so today we're gonna discuss um, the challenges, ideas, successes, best practices, and help needed, what areas are you needing it needed? And uh, we're gonna do some follow-up from our uh, membership foundation chair, public image, and um, that will give you some idea on um, how to uh, take some of these ideas that you get tonight and implement it in your club. So I'm gonna stop talking and I'm gonna uh, see is there a president that wants to get this going? What, what kind of challenges do you have? Uh, what kind of success that you're amazed you were able to accomplish in the first half of the year that can maybe you can share tonight with others on the call? Um, what keeps you up at night? What makes you have a double martini instead of a <laughs> cup of coffee? <laughs> Uh, those kinds of things. So um, if you would like to start uh, the conversation, as I said, we're using um, the reactions or um, the thumbs up, whatever you can and put it in the corner so I can quickly scroll and see who would. I'm doing double duty. Um, I've been spoiled by Terry Moore most of the year. 
on, on running these things. So uh, Terry can't be with us tonight. So I'm doing double duty. So um, is there anything um, that's um, jumping out at you that you're eager to talk about um, or bring up this evening? in a form of discussion. I know some of you have had some big successes. So um, why don't we um, focus on that? Rich, Rich Harrison, I'm gonna pick on you. Okay. Because you had a success this year and yours is the uh, Satellite Club, right? Yes. Yes. And so why don't you tell us about how that's going and uh, maybe it'll spur some um, ideas from others who might be thinking of forming a satellite club. Okay. Uh, the effort to form the satellite club uh, started, uh, well, it'll be over a year and a half ago now. Uh, and we, we got, quickly got six, seven people that were showing up regularly to the, the meetings, but we had difficulty getting over that eight number for a while. Uh, during that time, we also had a, some difficulty in that one of the venues we were meeting at closed for the season. We moved to another location, which then uh, two months later went out of business. Uh, so we're actually in our third meeting location, and we've only been an official satellite club since September. Uh, once we got over that 10-person uh, number, eight to become official, and we had 10, uh, actually 11 that were on the initial application, uh, we've actually grown to 14, uh, and we have uh, another one scheduled to be inducted later this month. Wow. We 15. Uh, we also have a good turnout from our noon club. Uh, some people are actually doing double duty coming to both uh, because they enjoy the, the more relaxed atmosphere we have in the satellite club. Uh, and we do some different things that are, are more fun. We have more interaction. But I think that's been a positive. Um, I think it's also helped folks who have been isolated during the pandemic uh, to come out and, and have a group of people that they can, uh, you know, at least sit in a large room with. Uh, so they're not getting that because they're working from home or their retirement activities have been canceled. They're unable to travel or whatever. Okay, well, that's great to hear. So uh, just to piggyback on that. Um, throughout the zone, many um, of the districts are having success building new clubs, innovative clubs by satellite, actually more success adding a satellite club. So that's something that the presidents uh, here tonight might want to think about. Um, and I know that um, you're going to be hearing more about that as we go through the number of sessions. Um, so innovative club model is perfect for a satellite. So um, when I went to um, some clubs, I could see that there were interests uh, just by the, the types of activities the clubs were doing that would help would be a good way to start an innovative club via satellite, right? So some clubs, one of mine is mine is one of them, um, and I, I'm um, working with them on that, but ha have a lot of interest around veterans issues. And so creating a satellite where you bring in new members, um, and it's a cause based and that satellite club continues the work of your legacy club, right? So you have all these great um, events, um, fundraisers, service projects, serving veterans, among others, but, you know, veterans um, and people in the community would want to be a part of that but they don't want that commitment of the legacy. So there's so many ways that a satellite club, now yours meets weekly, right, Rich? It will oh, be, we, or it will, yeah. Well, we meet twice a, twice a month. The twice second. a month, okay. So twice a month, so perfect, right? Um, and uh, so you could think about um, something like that. What is your club doing um, that sort of lends itself to being a cause-based club? That might be one way to look at it. And, um, but what were the first steps you took, Rich, though, um, to when you decided we need, we need a satellite club? What was the first, how do you get people, how do they learn about it? Well, I think I'm a, a good example. Um, I work about 30 miles from where I live, from the Little River area. Uh, I was unable to, to leave work, come to a Rotary meeting at noon and then get back to work. Uh, without taking a half day of vacation. Uh, so the evening meeting opened up opportunities and I would say 
Uh, there's at least four members of our satellite club that are in a similar situation. Uh, an evening meeting works better with them. So these were folks that have participated in activities we've done before, some of our fundraisers or whatever, had expressed the interest in Rotary but couldn't make the new meeting. Uh, so once we decided to do a satellite club, we went back and visited those members and said, hey, we have another option now. Uh, awesome. and that, that has made, uh, that's been one of our big selling points. That's awesome. So one of my colleagues in, um, happens in Italy uh, as a district governor. And so one of his clubs he showcased was they were getting um, a lot of uh, new member interest and um, the club decided, let's just take all the members that are interested and create a new satellite club with that group and support them rather than integrating them into the legacy. So it was actually the club that convinced the new members that this was the way to go. And like you said, the, the legacy members participate as well. So that's, that's a way to think about it too. Is anyone on the call thinking about creating a, an innovative club or a legacy, I mean, or a satellite club at this time? Any, any clubs working towards that? And Angela, can you wanna share what your thoughts are and what you might wanna mm -hmm. do? We're finding that we've grown in membership and we've desert. We used to have an older membership and now we've integrated a lot of newer members and they like to do things after work. Like you said, Rich, not everyone can leave work. They can't, you know, get away for lunch, but we've enjoyed getting together for chili cook-offs. So it's an interactive event and raising money for polio. And we had a chili testing and um, it was a, it was a competition and you bid on your favorite chili. And we had about 65 members at that. And then we're finding also they like to get together in outdoor spaces for maybe a beverage and a little dinner. So we've been incorporating this once a month to get, to get everybody involved. So that's what we're looking at right now. Mary J. Romeo is the president elect love her and yeah. um we are we're working on this in fact we were discussing it last week because we're seeing like you said rich some members are attending both and they like getting together because they want to catch up and during our we have hybrid meetings in the morning where we have people at the club in person and then we also have the zoom going at the same time and we spend about 10 minutes of that meeting just letting, putting them into chat rooms and letting them chat and asking them what they would like to do and, and what are their interests and what, how can we help them outside the meetings because we're becoming a very community-based, as we always have been, focus club and diversifying activities so they can also interact with the community, whether it's delivering turkeys at Thanksgiving or Christmas or a blood drive is coming up so that there's more opportunities for them to gather and that's where the satellite idea would make sense in taking place with that. That's great. Yeah. So yes, yeah, so I think I mean there's there's so many different ways to approach getting a new club. And um, the reason we speak about that is there's so much interest that's going unserved because we're we're not being creative enough. So that's that's a great idea, Angela. May is I there say anyone May I say Yeah, oh else? yes. We're also creating small groups within our club for interest. Um, I know this isn't a sexy name, but we have one called the Nail Bangers Club. And they just built a hundred desks for children that um, do not have desks at home. And then we're creating a photography club. So having different interest groups within the club. That's, That's awesome. We yeah. wanna, Donald um, Donald um, Hovis is on the call and he's president of Jacora and um, we, we, we just mentioned that in passing at one of our CRAP sessions, um, starting a photography club. So that's a great idea. Um, I like I like to hear that. Um, who else is doing? Yeah, Donald, did you want to say something? No, I mean, I would. Uh, well, I, what I think we were talking about is doing like something like a fellowship, like the whiskey dram or something like mm -hmm. that. Is creating a photographer's fellowship uh, similar to that. So that, that's cool to know, Angela. I'm a professional photographer, um, and would love to talk to you further about that and what you got going on there. That piques my interest because I love Charleston and I know that's where you are. Yeah, 
You can give us a <laughs> seminar. <laughs> there yeah, you go. exactly. Exactly. But here's the thing. See, we think we, you know, um, the the uh, fellowships are great too. But here's the thing: without limits, now there's innovative ways. We have clubs in our zone that um, are forming that have members throughout the world. It's all a virtual, but they're all around. Um, I'm trying to think what it is. Um, some sort of. Um, I think it's it's something to do with um, Amsterdam. They're either they either relocated here from Amsterdam or um, they have some connection to some heritage thing or something like that. And they're forming a club. Um, so I think there could be an uh, interest based club satellite just on photography it doesn't necessarily have to be um, a friendship one. And the friendship ones are um, actually worldwide, too. So I guess you could turn anything into um, an idea into a satellite and or a new club. Who's doing something different in engagement with their um, clubs, within their clubs? Uh, Angela talked about the Chile um, competition. That's really cool. What, um, what other things have, um, who's on from Hilton Head? Um, they did something good with a um, um, pet fundraiser. Is anyone on the call for that? So they, they just had, okay. Ian, do you want to talk about that? Yeah, that was, I mean, we, we've been trying a lot of different things. We, we're stuck. We've, we've tried to go to hybrid meetings and our membership is not ready to go back to hybrid meetings yet. So we've tried to do some more things to involve the, the club members. It was a photo contest. Okay. It was a photo contest among the, we gave people like two weeks notice and said, everybody take your pictures. And, and I forget, I think we had two categories. I think it was pets and landscape, pets and nature or something like that because of the, because of the, 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 the nature right. of Hilton Head. Uh, and we had a, and we presented them to the club and the club voted on, on the things. And there were some, there were some things given uh, to, um, uh, some prizes given away. We've done some other things where we have, uh, we have, uh, uh, and I should remember this vividly because I did it and I can't remember exactly what the details were, but it, but it was a competition within the meeting. It was like a, like a trivia contest or something like that. Um, and we, uh, for the top three, top three winners, we donated uh, $10 to my cart fund in the name of each of the three winners. So we, we've tried awesome. that. We've, we've done some things about bringing in, we've, we've off and on had member minutes uh, uh, where the, the original thing we did was we asked the members to, from their personal and professional perspective, probably in the June timeframe, June and July timeframe and into August, uh, give us, give all the members some view of how COVID was impacting them both personally and professionally and how all of the, all of the shutdowns were, uh, were, were impacting them. Uh, and, uh, it, and we got a lot of good feedback from that, from the club members, because since everybody has to be isolated, <laughs> it's good to hear what's happening out in the community, both professionally and personally mm -hmm. with, with these things. Uh, we've, we've, one thing we've done too is, and, and it was something like this was mentioned, we've started each meeting with Zoom, Zoom breakout rooms, where for the first 10 minutes of the meeting, we arbitrarily assign people assigned to people who are attending to a Zoom breakout room and they can you know, kind of catch up and socialize for the first five or 10 minutes of the meeting. Uh, that was actually a suggestion from one of our regular Rotary, visiting Rotarians, um, Mark Wilson, who belongs not, who, he doesn't belong to our club, but he, he's down here a lot. He visits our club. He belongs to a club in the Washington DC area. And he also Zooms into a club in Edinburgh, Scotland, which, is the, which was the club he originally uh, joined Rotary into, and he suggested that as something that those two clubs had tried and had very good success with it, and we've had extremely good success with that as well. But we're trying to involve the members in the meetings. We're trying to uh, uh, we're trying to uh, uh, as much as possible, and and we've had a we've had a good good experience with Zoom in that we regularly have around fifty of our members attend via Zoom. Um, so uh, we, we get a good attendance via Zoom and our members have been very flexible 
about participating in some of these things we bring up. Oh, I know what we did. We did the Zoom bingo. That was that was the oh. other thing that we did. We did the Zoom bingo, and then the top three finishers in the Zoom bingo got money donated in their name to my cart fund from the club. So, um, you know, we, we've been trying to do that. We've, we have been able to do a lot of our community events. We were able to do the bell ringing this year in a much limited, much more limited way mm -hmm. than we've done it in the past. We, were, we had about 45 members participate. 45, and that included some of our youth members, members from our Early Act and Interact clubs, because we do have two Interact clubs, two Early Act clubs, and one Junior Interact club that are affiliated with our club as well. So uh, we, uh, what I told my board at the beginning of the year is I said, don't assume we can't do things. Yeah. You know, That's plan right. like this is going to be a normal year. And when we find out we can't do them, we take them off the table, but we don't take anything off the table until it becomes obvious that we're going to have to. And, and the club and especially the leadership of the club has responded very well uh, to that. And we've done some new things. We've been able to do some new things this year. Our, our fundraiser was a brand new event for us. So and, and we raised $60,000. <laughs> so, uh, you know, wow. I, I told I, I've told my director of fundraising, you know, just keep on doing what you're doing and yeah. don't be afraid to come up with something, even if you think it won't be accepted very readily. If you really believe in it, you know, bring it up and we'll talk about it and we'll figure out how, if we can't figure out how to do exactly what you want us to do, we'll figure out how to do something that probably is re probably is related to what you want us, to, yeah. to what you're suggesting that we do. So it's basically we've tried to keep it as normal as we possibly can this year, uh, given all of the restrictions that we have. And we've, been, we've not been afraid to try new things. And, and, uh, and we've had our member, a lot of our members come up with suggestions for new things. And again, uh, we tell them, come to us. Don't be afraid. Nobody's going to say that's stupid. <laughs> you know, we, we got to figure out how to survive as a club through this mess. So that's awesome. So now the, the $10 million question is, what was the fundraiser that raised sixty thousand dollars? <laughs> it was it was sweet. It was a sweepstakes. Uh, we gave away the top prize was a three year lease for a BMW or not a yeah BMW X two. It was a three year lease for a BMW X two. Hundred dollars a ticket. We only sold seven hundred and fifty tickets. We had thirty prizes in total, um, and which means that seven hundred and fifty tickets. One out of twenty five tickets won something. Obviously, most of them weren't weren't as as uh, right, as, but but we did that and we we engaged the community. One thing our our fundraising chair did that we had been unsuccessful in doing in the past is he had he was able to reach out into the community and get the community involved in in the sweepstakes, and that's going to be a building block for us for an annual event that we're going to try to come up with that that has a uh, an auto automotive theme. To, that we're, we're hopeful is going to be something, uh, something that is uh, recognized along with the Concord Elegance, but it's going to be in the spring and it's going to be more of a local car show type of, uh, uh, type of an event. So uh, we're, we're planning, we're hopeful we can do that this spring, but we might not be able to given, given what the situation is going to be. But, but we also recognize that some of these ideas even though we can't do them now, we've got them in the queue for when we do start to come out of this. So, awesome, great so, ideas, great okay. ideas. Oh, I see Tony. Tony. Tony's been involved in some of these things I've been talking about. Yeah, so, he's got uh, his hand. He's got his hand up. So, yeah. Tony, want to add to that? Uh, thank you, Pauline. Thank you, Dean. Uh, two things that I thought I would mention that may be of interest to the folks. Uh, um, one is that dot. Uh, Jager, as as a assistant district governor, has had about quarterly meetings of the presidents within the, her, her area, and uh, Dean and I in particular, and also uh, Joni, who I noticed is on the call from mm -hmm. Lofton Club, uh, we have we have uh, supported one another in various ways. Uh, when we had the Salvation Army bell ringing, the location that we usually uh, would ring the bell at uh, did not participate with Salvation Army this year. And Dean had several locations that his larger club uh, supported. He offered us uh, an opportunity to take one of the days 
at one of those locations. And so we got uh, 12 or 13 of our members actually involved in ringing the bell for Salvation Army. Uh, and one of those members, Ed Dawashinsky, uh, told me uh, that this was his 40th year to ring the bell. As oh, a wow. And, and so uh, hats off to Dean for giving us that, uh, that opportunity. Uh, Joni uh, and one of her members, uh, one of her key members contacted us about a, a global grant that they have for a sanitation project in Peru and asked about our participation in that. Uh, they also had, had previously asked about our uh, help with the uh, Rise Against Hunger uh, that is going to be done uh, twice postponed, but it looks like it may be able to be done in April. And so, so we have been able to um, partner with the Bluffton Club in supporting some of their activities. So that has been uh, a real joy for me as president of the Sunset Rotary Club to have that interaction with these other lo uh, other ro Rotary Clubs in our area. Mm -hmm. And the, the Hilton Head Club also participated in that Bluffton uh, sanitation project. Uh, we, as I said, we we assumed we were going to be able to do some things. Uh, we didn't, we and we put our budget together that way. So we had some money in the budget for international projects that it became obvious we were not going to be able to use. So we just transferred that over to the Bluffton Club uh, for their project as well. So. Awesome, great teamwork. Love that. Good job. I just want to say a shout out to thank you for both of you guys and your club. We really appreciated the help there. Thanks. Well, that's You're great. welcome, Joni. And the second thing, Dean mentioned uh, member moments and uh, focus on a uh, particular member and their profession. Uh, we haven't done this yet, but in talking uh, during our meeting last night about ideas for this uh, uh, second half of the Rotary year, uh, we uh, recognize that we have uh, a cluster of, uh, of members uh, who are involved in real estate, some other, another cluster involved in accounting, CPAs, et cetera, uh, or tax uh, professionals, and a third cluster uh, from uh, uh, veterans of the military, uh, the uh, Army, Navy, and Air Force all represented. So uh, awesome. in the future, we're going to plan meetings where we will highlight those uh, particular professions and have one of the individuals from those professions uh, sort of organize the group and have as a group, have those individuals talk about their profession, what it has meant to them and uh, any, any funny stories that may have occurred uh, in uh, the time that they yeah. uh, served in that profession. So that's a, that's a to be determined now. Well, that's a great way to focus on vocations too. Um, any other clubs do a, a member showcase minute or uh, allow them to talk about themselves or anything like that? Angie, I see Angela nodding. Yes, we do. We, we call it um, tell your story. And so we, we try to have a newer member and then the next week an older member, a newer member and then an older member. And, it's, and so it's telling your story and they have three minutes only three minutes to tell their story. So it's quite fascinating. And then we also each month focus on a member of the month and we highlight them on our webpage. And then also we have a little rag we call the Daniel Island News and they're, fe they're featured in, a, in the paper as well. Hmm. So focusing and, and honoring those who've been in Rotary for a long time and then also some newer members too. So just our way of, yeah. of saying thank you. Great idea. So these are e these are easy things to take back for the clubs that aren't doing things like this and um, AGs that are on the line. Thanks for being here. Maybe you could share some of these with your clubs um, ideas. Uh, it's perfect to do via Zoom, right? Showcase someone. Um, yeah. And I know that um, Donald, you did that as well at your club. And not only that uh, during the meeting, but you do want to talk about how you showcase them on Facebook. Yeah, so we do what's called a member of the week, um, and they get three minutes to talk about themselves uh, at the club. And then we, and prior to that, we send them like 10 questions on, you know, a little bit about themselves. They may even answer those questions when they do their three minutes at the club, but they're actually 
featured on our Facebook page too. It's more like a Facebook post with their picture and their kind of, because we find a lot of people don't know everybody in our club. And so it just, it's a good way to kind of keep people engaged. Mm -hmm. Great ideas. All right. So um, I don't see anyone else with any issues. We did some great sharing here. I'm going to put up the share screen again. And we do have some um, district chairs who are going to give you some um, ideas, uh, things to focus on this month. And um, now that you've got a feel for this, maybe you can, uh, going forward, send in some topics you'd like discussed uh, at the next, uh, one of the next two meetings, and um, we'll proceed that way. I'd like to stick to the time, so therefore I am um, going to go to this. If there's time after, then we can um, um, continue that. So, um, we're going to say uh, one of the strategies of doing it in this way, meaning have y'all uh, have some chat at first, is for us to also observe and hear of different ways that we might be able to support you as a district and also for the AGs to bring back to other clubs um, and um, also to um, keep on track, right? for the rest of the year. So um, great things are done by a series of small things brought together. I feel like sometimes when we do these discussions or trainings, we have so much information. There's so many things you can do. And that's still the case right now, COVID or not, we are pumping out new uh, Rotary International, uh, are coming up with new ideas in the district. You know, we have our first ever golf tournament. You'll hear more about that. So there's a lot more going on. And sometimes we just overwhelm you with, uh, with uh, information. So we're going to take this approach. Um, we're going to have Mary Gask who is our district Rotary Public Image Chair. And uh, how this works is, here you go. You focus, the three things you wanna do around a subject is uh, focus in on what, what, what exactly um, is, is the, what you wanna do, what, what's the steps you wanna take. So you wanna focus on what, what your goal is, engage, engage the members in your club, get activity, get them involved, and then take action. Uh, some of the uh, engagement it is uh, on leadership. Some of them are in committees. Some is, are maybe by a member. So Mary, are you ready to um, go over your um, sure. clip at this time? Okay. Yeah, I'm ready. And this, I wish this were my idea. It's not. It's really mm -hmm. a guy named Joseph, I hope I get his name right, Rukowski. Alex, you may know him. I think he's involved with Zone 33. He came up with a medal that clubs can present to firefighters, EMT, paramedics, um, police officers, or nurses, anybody that's considered essential that have been going above and beyond during the pandemic. The thing I love about this is that if you give it to a military, not a military, but to a firefighter or a paramedic, a police officer is something that they can wear and it clearly shows that it's rotary involved with it. So it's a great public image piece, I think. Um, and, and it does help rotary gain involvement in the community. The um, way that members can help is they just get in contact with the sheriff's department or the fire department or the EMT facility and ask them who should receive this recognition. Or maybe one of the club members knows somebody that should receive this recognition. And um, Joseph has gone to a vendor that is Rotary certified to make these up. I don't have the cost, but if you're interested, I can get you all the information that you need on this. And then you can have a program where the Medal of Honor is presented to the individual um, I think Donald's club does this, and Pauline, I think your club does it. You've not used these medals, but you do no. have this program in place. And in Donald's club, they give a swag bag, and they, um, it seems like he said they give them a certificate or some type of, I'm not sure. I can't remember. You, yeah. want, me to, you want me to talk real quick, Mary? Um, no, let me finish up here. Uh, nope. <laughs> sorry. And, uh, 
this gets the members involved and then you can put it in the newspaper because the newspaper loves to print pe uh, pieces and articles about these people. So it's just a really good idea from a public image standpoint to get Rotary out in the community. Uh, we look good and the people receiving the award look good. Okay, mm -hmm. Donald, sure, go ahead. Gotcha, and I see in the chat that it looks like the medals are $80, um, so. I see that information. That's good to know. But no, at Chikora, we recognize a firefighter of the year. Uh, we have a chair of the event that works with our local chief at the Myrtle Beach uh, Police uh, Police Department, Fire Department, uh, where we have an application process. They submit four nominees. Uh, and then we have a selection committee of Rotarians at our club that actually pick the winner out of those four nominees. All four nominees are recognized at our firefighter of the year ceremony. It's usually held uh, around Memorial Day. And what we do is we have a member in our club that has a contract or a connection with Under Armour, and he gives us Under Armour duffel bags, four of them. Three of them are blue and one of them is red. Well, the one for red is red goes to the winner and the other three go to the runners up. And we get each member of our club is responsible for getting gift, gift certificates or gift cards to local restaurants, hotels, uh, Starbucks, Dunkin' Donuts, you name it, uh, for all four nominees. So all four nominees get swag bags full of all these gift certificates. Uh, you can put your promotional products in there, your Yeti cups and your Turvis tumblers. And then the winner receives $1,000. We're going to add these medals in starting this year. Uh, and all the runners up will receive $250. And Donald, I might suggest too, if you're given the bags, you get some bags that have rotary printed on them. It's just another step to get the public image out there. Mm -hmm. All right, great, thanks. Um, we also have, the, our, my club does uh, Police Officer of the Year and it's, um, uh, this year we didn't get to do it. We lost a police officer the two days before the um, recognition and we have a whole process for that. So if you are interested, this is how we can move forward from these meetings. We can get the clubs that are doing these types of things to contact you directly and share their information and uh, and or send you uh, materials that we may have about the subject. So um, next we're gonna have Digit um, Matheny, who is our uh, District Rotary Membership Chair, and he's gonna talk on uh, something to focus on this month as well. Hey everyone, good evening. Um, it's real simple in membership, it's different. So, you know, we're going to go back to the basics, if you will, and just practice on being plus one this quarter. Let's do, let's, let's reach out to your president elects, reach out to your membership prayers, you, uh, membership chairs, you, you presidents, engage them, ask for their help. And then the action you should take is go to one of the steps in our plans is to each of you call five members and personally ask them to identify a prospective member and a new member. Now, that one ask in general in, in the past has been you personally call five members and say, please, please engage, please bring us a member. This year, look at it a couple different ways. You can do it the old way where you ask them to bring a new member and, and to say, focus on bringing in a new member to our club. Or you can say, get us a new member that we can then have a Discover Rotary meeting with them to engage them and understand, help them understand what Rotary is about. But in the event of the 10-3-1, Terry Weaver of, of, um, of the zone, Rotary Zone 33 has told us is every 10 people will invite, three people will be interested in one joins. And I get the fact that we're having virtual issues, but with the innovative clubs that DG Pauline has talked about tonight and the ways to virtually engage these, these prospective members, I can, I can attest to this in our own club is we did a who do you know survey with just my membership. We have six people on my membership team and we, we tagged 35 potential members in one sitting. And we're actively reaching out to those members this year to get them engaged, four have already agreed to join. So we're in a positive number going forward. And I believe in the ways that I've seen coming in from at Rotary International 
and the ways that are reaching out to our website. People are looking for something to do. They need it. They need an outlet to do something in the community. So there are people ready to join Rotary. Uh, so again, be one, engage your president elects, engage your membership chairs and reach out and call five of your members in your club and ask them to help you signify somebody. Awesome. And I, I just saw Angela Drake uh, put in the um, chat box to share the survey. I will definitely send the survey out. I've sent it out before in, in a, in a district-wide mm -hmm. email, but I'll send it out to presidents and president-elects and membership chairs. It'll also have the worksheet with it to explain the process of the, the who do you know and the personal ask mm -hmm. from the president. Okay. And um, the other thing that we want to do um, with this th these three sessions are the things that you request from us. I'm going to put them all in one a folder on DACDB with a copy of this um, um, recording. And um, you could be able to access those items there. Uh, so um, whatever information you seek, we'll put it in there as well. And that way you'll, you'll have it in your hand. All right, the next person up is um, Paula Matthews, our district foundation chair. And I'm blocking part of her. There you go. Ready, Paula? I'm ready. All right. There you go. All right. Um, I think the first uh, uh, focus point that I would like to um, just reiterate um, is that we have the, uh, on January 12th, we have the MOU training, which is required. I sent that uh, email out this afternoon. Uh, it's been, we had the save the date card that went out in September, but the invite and registration went out today. The good news is you presidents um, aren't required to come, but your president elect is. So I'm, I'm depending on you to get that, make sure they get that message. That message was sent to them Unfortunately, all our clubs have not put their president elect on the um, database yet. So be sure that they know about that. And then the second person uh, encouraging to come is the person who is actually going to be involved in the project. What I've noticed in the last six months is that often um, the person that is turning in the closing report isn't even involved uh, in the project. Um, so the, whoever your project lead is, they really should be the one that, that comes to the MOU training on the 12th um, at five o'clock. So that's a focus area not right now, that something, an action that needs to take place. The next thing is um, the foundation is a great membership recruitment tool. And it is a great way to engage our members. And your district grant projects in your club are phenomenal, could be and are phenomenal opportunities for you to reach out into your community and engage your current members, as well as those who might be interested in becoming a Rotarian. What I've also found is that we don't do a good job of tooting our horn with that. So here's what I would like to ask you to do. On the district website, under the foundation tool, there is a cheat sheet. It's been there since July, I believe, and you've probably seen it. Review the cheat sheet under the foundation tab. There are numbers, a, a lot of resources there. There's also a speakers bureau. You can invite uh, speakers there. Um, they'll do virtual if they're from out of town, um, but lots of great opportunities. Um, what I need from you is articles and photos. We're going to be doing a, a, um, another foundation newsletter in January. I would love, love to have articles and, um, and pictures, really pictures, good action pictures. Don't send us pictures of people lined up and smiling. Give us action pictures showing us what Rotarians are doing. 
For example, if you've done a blessing box, perhaps there's a picture of somebody putting food in that blessing box, or perhaps there's a picture of somebody actually building that blessing box. So pictures about things like that. Um, the, the last thing is I suspect that there will be a number of district grant projects that won't be able to be completed during this rotary year because of the coronavirus of COVID-19. So again, this year, if you your club finds itself in that, that scenario, you can once again do a check writing grant project where you actually give money to an organization for COVID related expenses. The check has to be written directly to the organization. You need to get a receipt and that could be part of your closing report. So those are just some things to um, think about now. And then another uh, for engaging, taking action. This is coming up soon. The November or January 12th meeting, we will also be going over Global Scholars. Sandy Brooks will be doing part of that um, 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 Zoom session on Rotary Scholars and recruiting Rotary Scholars. Um, those are usually due in May um, or 1st of June, I think it is. So um, be on the lookout for great candidates um, next year. And Pauline, did you have that list up of what Yay. Okay. Here's some take action, folks. And we do a terrible job of this. We don't let our members know how their foundation money is being spent. So this year, our $370,000 was spent on these things that you see right now. We have given $100,000 to Polio Plus. $100,000. That is not including what your clubs are doing and raising. We've given $25,000 to the Rotary Peace Centers where people are educated in, in uh, peace and conflict resolution. 160,000 to the district grants, the two global scholars get 25,000 each. And then we have the global grants there. Um, and uh, part of that, I think, is for that Peru project, in fact, I'm pretty sure it is, that uh, the Bluffton Club is sponsoring, I think, the Hilton Head and Sunset, both of you mentioned that you were involved, and I believe that's the one that you're involved in. So that's kind of where we are, and um, please let your members know how their money is being spent locally, what we have spent our money on. There you go. Hey. Awesome, thank you. Appreciate that. Um, we are uh, moving on to the time of year when we are training the future leaders for the next year in um, leadership. And so um, George, if you're still on, on the call, we have um, your area of focus. If you wanna speak about that, uh, what's coming up and what you need. Sure. It's uh, is that time of year we're starting to help get our presidents ready for next year. Um, it's important for us. One of the things that you can do as a president is to help your president elect prepare for his year or her year that's coming up. And so we've got some things coming up. Our mandatory training with pets is scheduled. The save the date reminder went out a couple of weeks ago. And this hopefully in the next few days, we're going to have the opportunity for people to begin to sign up for pets up on the district website. This is the mandatory training for the president elects. Uh, we need to make sure that our presidents are confirmed that their, their president elects are going to be there. And we need to have those names in the district database. As we begin to reach out, we've noticed that um, we don't have all our president elects identified in the district database. So, one, one of the ways that you could help us the most uh, is engaging your members and ask your president uh, to ask that president-elect for 2021-22 to sign up uh, in that DB to review and update their profile with their current information and make sure that they're receiving our, our emails when they come out. I know everybody gets tired of all the emails, uh, but it, 
it's uh, especially in this year, it is the way that we, uh, we have to communicate. And, uh, it's important for us to have accurate information there to contact your Preston Lex. So in the next few weeks, they can get the information that will be coming out to them. And we need your help. We need your help to ensure that those Preston Lex are signed up and that they attend the virtual pets. This year, in an effort to try to save some time and, and reduce the amount of time that your president elects have to sit in front of a computer at one time doing our virtual training. Uh, we're gonna be using the Rotary International Training Center. Um, we're gonna be using information that is virtual once again, but uh, is provided through RI. They have some wonderful training materials for president elects. And before the actual training, on February 26th, there'll be a number of units that we ask those Preston Lecs to complete beforehand. Uh, some of the information like uh, topics that we've covered in pets in the past, maybe topics that we covered in your year, like um, uh, the RI, uh, some of the RI website information and putting in goals into Rotary Club Central, will be covered in some of those pre-pets sessions that will be taken off the Rotary International Training Center. So it's going to be important for you to encourage your president elect to, to go ahead and get started early, get started taking those classes, get started um, going through those online sessions where they're prepared when they get into pets. We'll move pretty quick in pets this year. I know it always seems like you probably felt like at your pets that it was a little bit of drinking from the fire hose. Uh, but this year maybe even a little bit more that way as our sessions will be condensed a little bit as we try to reduce the time that we tie people up for a virtual session. So uh, things will be a little different this year, but we are excited about what we're going to be able to offer virtually and uh, beginning to put speakers together. And I think we're going to have an exciting pets. Even though it's a little different this year, I think we'll be able to help get your president elects ready for their year of service. Great. Thank you, George. Um, I'm going to just speak about um, one area of focus that is so beneficial to, to you as a member, uh, to the members in your club, and for serving the community. We have um, the Rotary Works um, sessions that are coming up. Rotary Works is a way to assist folks in transition, folks who um, may have been furloughed, folks who are not in the right job and, and want to get into something better, young adults entering the workplace, um, all those areas around the issues of employment and vocation are being covered during these series. The next one is January 13th. Um, there is something that was emailed out to each member. So uh, if you're talking about it to your club, they should have an e um, email in there from um, the zone. Uh, and um, the way that you can uh, make sure the word gets out is um, you wanna promote it to uh, the members as well, but they can share it with friends and family, uh, and maybe their own children who may be you know, graduating from college and looking uh, for a career path. There's a mentorship component to it too. So anyone can request a mentor in a particular field, uh, maybe, maybe a field or just in um, career uh, placement or maybe even how to interview, things like that. So there's so much uh, involved around that subject. You really um, need to take a look at it. And the series continues on. There's um, an, a number of series coming up, I think all the way to June. So how you take action presidents, invite a club speaker on the subject. There's um, a whole website dedicated to Rotary Works and we'll make sure that you have that. It's in the, it'll be in the district newsletter next week as well. It's on the calendar. So there are a lot of places you can find information about it. Um, you might wanna post it on, on your club Facebook page or your personal one, or uh, if you're involved in LinkedIn, LinkedIn, let some of your contacts know there. And, and also you can place it in your club newsletter um, or as part of your um, recruitment for membership. And if you um, have a Discover Rotary, you need to add it there too. So I'm speeding up a little bit. Another good um, place to promote it is, this is the time of year that you would be having your mid-year club assembly. So um, 
that's in January and February. So you could include it in there and you want to review with the club. Don't overlook this just because we're having Zoom. This is important information for your members to know. And we can ask them to give them a survey and ask how, how they think things are going. Do they have ideas they want to submit to you so that you might include it till the end of your year. So take a look at that as well. Um, now you all received this um, new um, award. I that, can't, honey. Um, I got it. Be... I got, I'm on a meeting right now. I got this. Yeah, Rob, what are you making? Drink? Oh, I'm so sorry. I thought I was <laughs> muted. I'll have one. <laughs> I'm cleaning the kitchen. I'm so sorry. I thought I was muted. Well, I you apologize. know no one can mute me, Rob. There's no okay. muting Polly. Just kidding. All right. So anyway, here's the, here's the, you've received this in the mail. If there's any questions about this or anything else we discussed tonight, it's pretty simple. Um, just this is a personal award. This is something that you as the president or you as the district chair or an assistant governor will qualify for. So um, it's not too complicated. If you have questions about it, we can answer. I just want to say, uh, this is a quote from George Whitfield. Press forward, do not stop, do not linger in your journey, but strive for the mark set before you. The mark set before you is June 30th. We want to make our mark for this year. So um, this is a good time that we can ask some questions about things. If you have any, whoops, um, I said 7.15, it's 7.11, um, but we certainly can answer anything. Okay, so Watery Works, uh, Works is uh, in the website is on there from Paul Walter. If you want to go to the chat box and take a look. Um, and any questions? I want to also thank our um, Rotaract folks for being with us today. Um, is there any anything, Emily, as a president, anything that you can want to add about uh, anything you've heard tonight or share about what your club's been doing, if they've been meeting, anything like that? Yeah, of course. Thank you for having us. Um, I think a lot of our concerns are similar about things like member engagement um, and just attendance of meetings and things like that. And so I'm hearing everything today from your all clubs has been really helpful and has given me ideas about how to engage our members in meetings. Great. I think that um, Rotary Works will be beneficial um, for y'all too. So, um, you know, you can start to use it during your college uh, term and uh, have it move, working for you before you graduate, right? Um, anything else from anyone, uh, any assistant governors have anything that they want to add? All right. So, any ideas for um, next month when we meet well we'd love to see and maybe um oh everybody wants to know what rob is drinking it's got to be some sort of bourbon rob what are you drinking rob <laughs> i don't know we, he's not answering no um, rob was just drinking water i'm sorry my daughter made dinner and i was uh sitting at the table and i had to leave the meeting briefly but now it's my turn to clean up the kitchen, but it's just water tonight. Thank you. Oh, all right. <laughs> Good to have you. All right. All right. So if there's nothing else that uh, we'd like to add, I just want to remind everybody that if we're going to feed 10 million, we want to track it. So make sure those numbers with your grants that you're giving out and the projects you're working out. And thank you all to the clubs who have done blessing boxes. I know that was an ask for me this year and I so appreciate it very much. Um, and um, so count those too, right? And uh, Michael O'Toole's here. He is on um, the Rotaract uh, district chair. Anything you want to add um, about Rotaract? I don't know, we can't hear you. So I think you're, you're unmuted, but I think your computer uh, volume might be down. Let's see. No. If it's not your volume, maybe it's something in your mic. All right, anyone else have anything else that they for the good and order of the of the first make your mark session? All right, I'll be looking for those 
forms to come back completed and successful. All right. Thanks for all coming tonight. Appreciate it. And um, have a good month. Take care. Take care, everybody. Good job, Pauline. Oh, well, thank you. That was good. I got to learn my my Zoom better. Zoom a loom. <laughs> no, gonna, I think it's good. <laughs> Go take Thank the you. Zoom webinars now. <laughs> Thank you, Pauline. I apologize about that. I thought I had myself oh, muted when fine. I was clearing dishes. It was, it was, it was a perfect good break, timing. Rob. It was a good break. <laughs> we needed some levity, right? And some fun. Right. And we need you to come clean up our kitchens. <laughs> well, we have a rule in the house. If you cook, you, if you don't cook, you clean. If you clean, you don't cook. You know, that that's what Ken sense. and I do. Yeah. But yeah. See, the thing is, is he gets off easy because I clean as I cook. I do that a lot too. There's not much left when I'm done. And he messes up every pot in the house. <laughs> oh Lord. Yeah. Holly made uh, a favorite recipe. She made Brazilian stroganoff and it was delicious. We had a wonderful Ooh. night tonight. Yeah. What makes it Brazilian? Um, it's, um, it was sirloin, of course, with peppers. Or sirloin with onions, a little deglazing. A uh, special cream from Brazil. Sour cream doesn't taste quite the same. Oh. Um, it's more buttery. And then, Is it yeah, more buttery? and then a little bit of um, ketchup in there. Uh, and then they serve it over better rice with a little shoestring potato crisp. So she went to the Brazilian store today and got all the Brazilian point on stuff to make mm. it. It was very nice trip. <laughs> and how old is this child? Uh, she's a freshman in, in Clemson, but um, she uh, she was in Brazil her sophomore year of high school. She didn't exchange there. Good. So, Good yeah, yeah. Sounds uh. great. Hey, Pauline, is there any more uh, talk about the uh, RI president coming to the Charleston for the the, the big, meet, the big yeah, meeting? Yeah, yeah, it's not. I think we we should know. Um, they extended the non-travel Rotary till March, the end of okay. March. Okay. So May is still looking. I don't know if there's well, awful lot hope. Yeah. We just could go golfing without him. <laughs> oh yeah, we don't need him there, right? <laughs> Our old little party. Then we have the golf tournament coming up. I'm looking forward to that now, that June um, golf tournament. We got to start promoting that. Rob, but, you going to be involved in that? I, I Not directly, no. No, I mean, I think I'm going to try to see if our club will um, uh, sponsor a team and I'll volunteer to be one of the players, but that'll be yeah, about yeah. it. Yeah, uh, we're, yeah. We're probably going to start working on that um, middle of this month and kind of okay. get rolling on getting teams and getting sponsorships so okay. yeah that would be good i hope it's going to be okay. a good turnout i hope so too first time all right well good night everybody thank you hey Bye. good night rob thanks